Also, would you shoot the thing when it's frozen there? It looked pretty fucking harmless at that point. Wouldn't it have made more sense if a less exciting conclusion, if the T-800 had started, you know, dragging it over to the molten steel and, you know, pushing it in or something? Maybe at least have them decide on that and then he walks over to it and then, you know, it starts to crack apart as the T-1000 resists the freezing or something. I just can't stand when characters in movies are entirely to blame for their problems. If he hadn't shot it, maybe they wouldn't have had all that trouble there at the end. Well, at least not in fucking Hollywood movies, you know? Because yes, of course, in real life, a lot of people are partially to blame for the issues they're dealing with. You know, some create their own problems, some don't deal with the issues they know they have for various reasons. But just save that for the drama, save that for the Oscar bait. Don't put it in a movie that has two robots fighting each other. Well, that's it for Terminator 2. So, moving on to... I don't actually have a copy of it, so... T3. Yes, my three fingers will have to double for the number three. It is also, however, what I would like to shove up Jonathan Mostov's talentless hack ass. Now, if any of my subscribers out there are in a position to make this happen, I say go for it. In fact, let your nails grow out for a bit before. The man has this innate ability to take something that could be awesome and make it shit. Fresh, steaming piles of shit. T3 and the fucking surrogates. The surrogates. It had so much fucking potential. Dude, I'm not even gonna watch your fucking submarine movie. I have no reason to believe that you could possibly impress me. So T2 has really good, clever self-irony that, you know, makes you chuckle. This fucking mocks the first two movies. It is a fucking parody, and it is a travesty. Is Arnie wearing Elton John glasses supposed to be funny? How about the male stripper gag? Maybe the one good thing about the existence of T3 at all is the admittedly somewhat funny Sergeant Candy scene that explains why, why the T-800s sound like Arnie. Then I found out it was actually supposed to be in the fucking film. Your Honor, I rest my case. Clearly, Jonathan Mostov has no fucking clue what he's doing when he's directing action movies. And oh, this is a T-850, so, you know, they can fuck around with it without it having to be a different actor than Arnie. And they just barely do. What was the fucking point other than, you know, the hydrogen fuel cells, which turn into minor hydrogen fucking bombs? Who makes a design flaw like that? Well, I guess whoever designed the Death Star and the equally vulnerable space stations and spacecraft in the prequel trilogy. Also, if that is his fuel supply, how can he be running for several seconds after taking the second one out? The weapons are so pathetically chosen in this. Hardly any of them look cool or are handled in any kind of interesting way. Seriously, the coffin thing with, you know, the machine gun, that was so inferior to the scene with the minigun in T2, which it basically is a fucking remake of. I'd also like to point out that this movie actually isn't particularly exciting, it's just big and loud. How about the fucking crane chase? Okay, a bunch of fucking telephone poles get knocked down. Big fucking deal. I watched it with a car fanatic, and he was like, that was it? In fact, I'm not sure I know of anyone I've watched it with that enjoyed that scene particularly. The fucking crane acts more like a fucking train or something, being absolutely unstoppable for no good reason. I mean, yes, the first two had over-the-top action, but there was some sense of the laws of physics still applying. The whole thing with Kate Brewster is pretty uninspired. Also, I read that originally it was going to be Sophia Bush, whose last name is quite fitting considering the role she usually takes. I suppose she wouldn't have been slutty like this film, but at least she would have been hotter. It also sucks that so much of the action is during the daytime. It was so much more interesting with the fight and battles being during nighttime. I mean, that was a huge component of the first two films. 
and this wastes such a good opportunity with the TX having sort of an explanation for, you know, bringing guns through the, the time machine by her using fucking flamethrower and RPG and just boring ass shit. She never seems to be all that close to killing anyone she's supposed to. She has a fucking million chances to take over Arnie. By the way, cars are not electrical, okay? They're fucking mechanical. She would not have been able to run them like that. Clearly, Jonathan Mostov just wanted a car chase where several cars were trying to ram John Connor. By the way, if that's your thing, I suggest you just go to a fucking bumper car rink or whatever the fuck they're called. I don't know, maybe that's something the oil companies can use to try to talk us out of buying electrical or hybrid cars. Well, you know... Terminators could come from the future and control all our cars. Yeah, it's a pretty stupid fucking argument, but those guys take what they can get. Yes, that is of course absurd, but the people arguing against green energy pretty much take what they can get. About the TX, which is a really fucking stupid name by the way, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to make you think like Dominatrix, because some Hollywood producers seem to think that all young male s &M tendencies. But Kristana Loken, I don't really have a problem with. It's not so much the fact that she's severely fuckable, it's the fact that she clearly put effort into her performance. She took training so that she could convey a lot without words, and she does pretty fucking well. Her killing a bunch of fucking officers is really stupid, and I don't necessarily think that a robot from the future should lick blood for obvious fan service and eroticism. Or look like she's coming in her pants upon realizing that it's the blood of John Connor. Seriously, how fucking stupid is it that he gets locked up in that cage and how he's like on animal painkillers for much of the movie and overly emotional? Come on, Mostov, get the fucking plot moving instead. As for the TX, in general, where's the fucking upgrades on this bitch? She can't hear Claire Danes breathing heavily, you know, one wall away. She's got no heat vision, nothing. Oh, you say she's an exoskeleton covered with the liquid metal thing from the T-1000? Well, that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Seriously, and how fucking double jointed is she that she can, you know, spin her legs around in obvious fan service like that? I think Hamilton pretty much nailed it when she said, you know, after reading the script, it's soulless. And it apparently didn't really focus on her character, and right there, you fucked up. And the fucking time travel theory is fucked around with again. Aha, so you can change some things, but some th other things remain static. <laughs> I distinctly smell bullshit. I'm going to insult you, John, because that's how psychology works. Why is the TX so much fucking stupider than the T850? The shooting of fake Kate was maybe decent, but it lasted for like two seconds out of the entire fucking movie. How did they get into the base? The CGI of Arnie putting his head back on is ridiculous. This kind of virus explanation is bullshit. Without some kind of centralized entity, it would not be fucking smart enough. The Terminators in this are so fucking clumsy, they're just crashing into shit all the time. Seriously, try to count how many times a vehicle crashes into something in this fucking movie. This creates such unnecessary continuity errors. Like with the ages and shit. How fucking useless was Earl Bowen's cameo? I also can't stand how they fuck around with famous lines from the first two. Do you wanna live? Come on! And she'll be back and shit like that. It's also just the wasted potential. This really could have been something. At the very fucking least, it could have been fun action. But no, it's uninspired, repetitive, almost remake bullshit. It's way too similar to T2. Yes, the second one was more or less a remake of the first one and could somewhat have stood on its own, but it introduced new ideas. This one just takes us back to square one. You know, two whole fucking movies, and then at the very end of it, we're left with, oh wait, it was right what they said in the first one, Judgment Day is inevitable. Terminator Salvation. I've been wanting to tear this one a new asshole for, I guess, a little over a year. It's still pretty recent.